Welcome to Building Better Businesses. I'm Kristen Dees, founder of Catalyst Consulting, an agency that helps small businesses and entrepreneurs start, grow, and level up their businesses. This podcast will bring you interviews with experts in all things business related. Have questions for a business attorney? We've got answers. How about your health insurance? Got you covered there too. New episodes coming your way every week. Find us on the podcasting platform of your choice. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting. My guest today is Laura Holloman. I always forget to ask. This happens every time. I'm like, <laughs> what is your last name? I'm pretty yep. good with names usually. So good. Okay. Good. Yep, oh perfect. my God. Um, a wizard and creator of the Indotype formula, which is a way to identify kind of who you are and what your natural state of being is. Um, and we met through Polka Dot Powerhouse, which is what a lot of my most recent guests have come from a post that I made to be like, hey, I'm looking for podcast guests. So it's always fun to connect with other Polka Dots and um, get to learn more about different different things that can help business owners and entrepreneurs. So anyway, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you as a human. Who is Laura? Well, I currently live in Wisconsin. I was kind of born and raised. You can hear it when I say the word Wisconsin, but I'm actually truly from here. Yep. Uh, And born and raised in Wisconsin. I live in a small town right now, two churches and a bar uh, out in the country with my two sons, um, 17 just turned and a 12 year old. And we live in a tree house in the woods next to state park property. I'm about three stories up, so I'm up in the treetops with the birds all day, and it's just gorgeous. Um, I We love all things outdoors without snow, which I know is weird because we live in Wisconsin, but I am not a snow kind of gal. I like to huddle inside next to my wood stove um, while it is snowing outside, but otherwise we're kind of outdoorsy, hike, fish. Uh, do some camping. I'm so glad that live music has come back uh, post COVID. Go to the winery, sit and listen to local bands. That's one of my favorite things to do. Very nice. Yeah. I am the same. I hate snow and I'm on, I think we're on the same or close. Like I'm in uh, Eastern Washington state. So it's, we get snow and cold and dark and I'm like, I love the outdoors, except I hate being cold. (laughs) Exactly. I don't know why I still live up here because I really like Mexico. (laughs) Do you have a whole bunch of friends that are always like every year like, oh, but this year we're going to try cross country skiing or we're going to like they keep trying to coax you into the cold snow. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to do it this year. (laughs) I've never done any snow sports. I've done I've gone snowshoeing like a couple of times, but it was like, I don't know, 15 years ago, probably. Um, But this year because I get terrible seasonal depression. Like it's mm. awful. And the last couple of years, it just kind of feels like it keeps getting worse. COVID obviously did not help any of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm like, okay, like I need something to look forward to. So I'm like, I think I'm going to learn, um, either snowboarding or skiing, and then I'm going to go snowshoeing. And I th- think I have to buy so much clothes. Like that's the other thing. <laughs> it's like, you have to have yeah. so many that, clothes. And that's what everybody buy. says. Like, Oh, if you got the right equipment, you yeah. can find I call BS on that. I've gotten great boots and great socks and my feet are still always cold. (laughs) And, you know, like I just, I'm not made for it. So I just stay inside. We, we watch movies in the winter and it's delightful with people if we can. Yeah. I'll let you know how it goes. We'll stay in touch. I'll be like, well, it sucked. Uh, I just decided to go drink in the lodge all day instead. Yes, see, that's the kind of, my boys enjoy doing some skiing and I'm like, that's cool. You go run the hill. Mommy will be inside with an old fashion. Yeah, reading a book by the fire. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, that might be what I do for the winter. Just go up with my friends and I'll just be like, I'll be here reading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, <laughs> that's great. I, I feel like you also covered your fun fact too, but the, with like living in a treehouse is pretty cool. Um, 
right? That's yes, that would fact. be my yeah. fun fact. Mm-hmm. Yep, I live I live in a beautiful little treehouse. That's awesome. I went to a treehouse resort once in uh, Southern Oregon, and it was just so so cool. Like it just it's so magical, and you're like, there's probably fairies up here in the trees with me somewhere. Because oh, how could there not is. be? Yeah, it is. And and the the secret behind our treehouse is it's actually just a condo um, in a little condo community, but we don't see any like i have wall-to-wall windows all the way around we don't see any of our neighbors all i look out is at the trees and 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 then down into the forest and see the deer and the you know we have owls that come and sit in our tree and oh my god yeah so it's it's magic so it just amazing (laughs) sounds better to say treehouse than condo yeah no i support treehouse yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) <laughs> we never spoke of this. Yeah, I'll delete this part. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make sure nobody like knows. Just a condo. Nope. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, we have to keep the magic alive, Laura. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, forty minutes later, um, <laughs> what what do you do for the work side of things, and how do you provide support for business owners and entrepreneurs? Sure. So, I am the creator of the Endotype Formula which is like a personality profiling system on steroids. It's souped up, it combines in its own unique way, right? It combines a lot of what the other personality profiles out there are trying to do. Some of them tell you how you think, some of them tell you what motivates you, some of them tell you kind of how you physically work. The endotype formula combines all of those things and really gives you a very comprehensive picture. So for myself personally, uh, I do two main things with that. I work with mostly coaches, some entrepreneurs, to be able to help them uniquely position themselves in the market, differentiate themselves from the competition because they're basing their business on who they truly are. And by doing that then, it's super easy to also identify ideal clientele based on the endotype formula and then get an inside peek at exactly how your clients work, what motivates them, how they think, how you write sales copy, all of those things. So I support, um, like I said, mostly coaches in doing that. The other part of my work that I do is I realize the endotype formula has so many applications, but I don't need to be the expert in all of those things. So I work with other, um, leaders in their field, people who are trained in things like HR or relationships, um, matchmaking, parent-child relationships, any, any kind of industry where seeing how a person works from the inside is going to benefit them. And we look at collaborating and, and allowing them to utilize the endotype formula to be able to do what they do more masterfully. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it. Like, um, I would use it in the application of like leadership development, employee engagement. Um, if I was working with a business who was looking to get better at that kind of stuff, like who are my people making sure people are in the right chairs, they're this right seat, so to speak. Um, and that their leadership is being as effective as possible, all that kind of stuff. Like, cause that's where I've used different assessments before is, you know, for my own teams and that kind of stuff is, it's just helpful because so many people don't know where, like, they don't know their stuff. They don't know how they're wired. They don't really know what their strengths and weaknesses are like to that, like nitty gritty detail of, Oh, this is why I'm good at organizing in this way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Precise. And, and especially in terms of leadership, you brought up leadership, which is like one of my hot button things right now, kind of a little passion project is, is people think in order to be a leader, they have to be like that guy over there. Mm-hmm. I can be a leader as soon as I master these skills this guy over here has, which if that's not how they're wired, they're never going to get there. So yeah. we need to be a leader of our own, like like our own way. And the endotype formula can help us to understand what exactly that means and gives us permission to do leadership our own way. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things I liked about my, one of my favorites, um, is the strengths finder, Mm -hmm. um, assessment. And that was like a rite of passage when I worked back in retail days at Best Buy, um, when you became a supervisor, you took your, um, strengths finder and you figured out your top five themes. And then, 
um, I've taken it a couple different times over the years and it's changed a little bit um, as I've evolved as a leader and a human, but I liked the, the focus on like, this is what you're good at. And this is also the flip side of that. Um, so for those of us that are super strategic, <laughs> sometimes we over strategize. Okay. Like it's fine. Um, <laughs> Yep. I'm fine. I've never done too many plans. Um, but it's, it's just kind of nice to see it from that perspective. And like uh, my, one of my other ones is responsibility where you take on psychological ownership of every task. And then sometimes you also overcommit to things and then you burn yourself out because you're doing all the things. So it's like on one hand, yeah, you're super committed and you'll get the stuff done. But then also on the other hand, it can be, um, hard, but like those kinds of things where it's like, be who you are, because I was always different uh, from the sales environment. Like a lot of my peers in the leadership in Best Buy, they were um, competitive, high achievers, uh, sales driven, like that kind of stuff. And I was completely different from all of them. Um, and so it was just kind of nice to be able to be like, oh yeah, Kristen's actually good at the, like, we're all insane in this way. <laughs> um, she's good in these things. So <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was just, I know it was, it was a part of the conversation. I feel like in it, um, it's hard to find that in a lot of like corporate type places sometimes is like, Oh, Laura's really good. at it. She's not good at these things, but that's cool. Cause Correct. Kristen is. So Correct. it's fine. You have to and, like, and it's not the... a conversation that people walk into. I mean, you know, I've been asked to sit on different leadership teams and boards and different, uh, you know, and, and I'm like, okay, like, let's be really serious right up front. I'm not sure you want me. <laughs> And they're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, here's here's what I know I could bring to the table, but I don't play the corporate game real well. <laughs> I If I think an idea is kind of dumb, I'm probably just gonna say it. Um, I am not super precise and organized, so you and I are very different in this capacity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, and so I'm not gonna be your detail-oriented person. Um, here's what I got that I can bring to the table though. Um, and they're like, and sometimes it's like, awesome. Thanks for letting us know. And then they fade into the distance. Yes. They're like, don't, <laughs> or, don't call us, please. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no or one will call other you. times it's like, yeah, that's exactly why I want you. Like we have yeah. other people who can do the detailed tasks. I want your ability to see things from a different perspective or your the fact that you do speak up and you do inspire other people to be who they are, whatever it is. Um, but if you can walk into a situation knowing what your natural strengths and weaknesses are, I think you're and, and be straight up. You're, it's just you're going to get on the right. You're going to be in the right position more often that way. Mm -hmm. I think in any kind of relationship, honestly, like it doesn't, it, the, the better, you know, yourself. And it's, it's almost like, um, like a little bit of boundary setting almost. Cause you're like, Hey, like, this is where I'm at. This is what I've got. Um, this is what I'm not good at. And, uh, I'm with you on some of those things too. Like I am big picture, very strategic. Um, I care a lot about how the details happen. I just hate doing the details, <laughs> which is something that I've realized over, you know, over time, I'm like, I care a lot about how it all comes together. Um, and that's part of my like strategic, like structure organization stuff. I just don't like doing the things. I'm like, can like somebody else like type this email, like this is awful. <laughs> um, but it took me a while to figure that out because I care so much that in a lot of my positions, I did a lot of detail stuff. So people are like, oh, you're really detail oriented. And I'm like, but it makes me want to die on the inside. Right. right. <laughs> but it and took me a while. <laughs> that is one of the things that with, cause I've taken the strengths. I've, I've taken all the quizzes. I was a little quiz yeah, obsessed. Me too. <laughs> um, but I've taken the strengths finders and just because I'm good at something doesn't mean it's natural. Doesn't you mean like I it. love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I was actually um, speaking and um, to a group that knows me really well. It was actually to one of the, to my, my Polka Dot Powerhouse chapter. Mm -hmm. And I had said something about this, this fact of, you know, natural versus learned. And I said, I at one point was a mortgage broker. There was an audible gasp from the room. Because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, because that's not really the job I should be doing. 
Right. Um, it's a lot of precise. It's a lot of numbers. And, and not to say I'm great at math. I can do precise. I can fill out those applications. I can make those calls. I had no joy with it, though. Yeah. Just because I can do it, because I have done it, doesn't mean that's the thing that I want to do. That's not the position I want to put myself in to have joy mm -hmm. in in my work. Yeah. Yeah, I so. do a little like um, brainstorming activity with people sometimes. Sometimes it's in presentations. Sometimes it's, you know, for one-on-one. -on -one, and it's uh, just a little grid of the top two are um, things you love to do, things you're good at doing, and then things you hate doing and things you're bad at doing. Because I think a lot of people think the same thing. Like if they're good at something that they should enjoy it and that they should do it all the time. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I usually is at the beginning of who do I need to hire and what can I get rid of? And like, those are, that's kind of part of the process is like, Oh, Okay, like I again, I can do math. I can do bookkeeping. I've managed a multi-million dollar P and L for like most of my life, but I don't want to do the bookkeeping. Uh, I just want to look at the reports. So uh, that was one of the first things that I outsourced. I'm like, but you can do it. Like you know how to do this stuff. I'm like, oh god, I hate it so much though, <laughs> and right. it takes me so we much get that longer. Internal yeah. talk. Yeah, you know that's the other thing that I love about the endotape formula is because it predicts that internal conversation that we have. Um, what other people would call imposter syndrome or the critical mm. self or our saboteur conversation, those internal conversations that kind of try and shame us into doing crap that we don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, you know, or whatever it is, um, the, not only does the endotype formula predict what that sounds like for each endotype, but it explains why it's there and what good it's supposed to be doing if mm. we're allowing it to do its job right. So that's a very handy tool to be able to have too. Yeah, no, it's super helpful. Uh, what is your background? How did you end up with the endotype formula? <laughs> How did you get, this is like the same, I describe this as like a drunk ladybug. Uh, like the, the entrepreneurship journey is like, how did you, like you were talking, like you mortgage broker at some point in yeah. time. So like, how yeah. did you end up? <laughs> you know, here's the thing. So I, um, I went to a private school that my grandma started in her basement. So for all intents and purposes, I was homeschooled. It was very structured. We actually learned. And at that point, we learned how to learn and we learned how to satiate curiosity, right? If we had a question, grandma was like, <laughs> she never wanted to admit she didn't know the answer. So she'd just be like, that's really interesting. And I bet the rest of us would like to know the answer. Why don't you go do some research in the encyclopedia? Because we were rolling with Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Go do some research and you can do a little presentation for that on your English this week. Thanks. <sighs> Basically um, like Google, but like right, yeah, like go figure like it out yourself. Sending her and minions then tell off us the to... rest of us. Great. Yeah. Oh, that's a great. But we learned, but right, we learned yeah. how to learn, or at least I did. I learned how to learn and I learned how to be curious. And curiosity was never um like a bad thing that that I got in trouble for having. Mm -hmm. So that has served me very well. And I have been serially self-employed for the majority of my life since I, I started my first business when I was 18. Um, and, and <laughs> yeah, drunk ladybug, sure. You bet. <laughs> Cause it's been a little bit of everything um, mm -hmm. in, in trying to get to where I was probably. So the, the business that I had just previous to the endotype formula being developed was probably my longest and most successful. I had a women's um, personal training studio. I became a, a personal trainer. I started it, this little 500 square feet that I had attached to my house, grew it into a big gym, then shrunk it back into what it really wanted to be, which was a boutique training studio. I had a lot of fun. And in that, I, I also knew because I got into it because I had a personal journey with weight loss that came from me doing some personal growth work. It wasn't about the losing weight that was going to be a byproduct or a way to learn more about me, but I was a personal growth junkie. So I brought that then into the gym 
And it was my gym clients that told me, oh my gosh, you're my life coach. Like you're my life coach. Or they would call it workout therapy. This is my therapy. And I'd be like, mm, we're doing squats. But I knew if I kept them talking <laughs> that they would do more squats if mm -hmm. they were talking and distracted. So we would talk about personal growth and, and life coachy kind of stuff. But I didn't know that's really what I was doing um, until my clients started advocating for me and told me that, and I started doing some research. So then I incorporated life coaching into what I was already doing, both inside and outside of the gym. Um, and then I went through a divorce. And it was already becoming clear to me that my time at the gym was probably resolving that probably more of what I was called to do and more of what I naturally did very well was less squats and push-ups and more empowering people to take control of their life, to really advocate for themselves, to make choices and then have some accountability, which just didn't need to be in a gym. So when I got, went through the divorce, sold the house, sold the house in town, I moved away from the gym and I needed to spend more time with my boys instead of time with my clients because they both wanted early mornings and evenings, right? And my kids needed to be early mornings and evenings. So the gym closed. Meanwhile, I had been introduced um, by somebody else who, who just was a personal or you know, who was a, a survey, a personality profiling junkie. I used profiles in my gym. I used profiles in my life coaching business, but we started comparing notes, right? I preferred one, she preferred another. We were like, why do you like that? That one sucks. Um, and some questions arose and some patterns arose because she was using more of a profile that was based on how people thought when we when we quizzed everybody inside my gym utilizing this system that she was kind of developing body patterns started showing up and i was like okay tell me why all of the protector types uh, all have excess weight on their body they have thick legs they you know they have they have um like blood sugar issues why is that and she's like oh do they like she she could but that that was right that was what i did i spotted these body patterns in people and so she and i were the first researchers that started working on the endotype formula her life kind of took a left um and and just took her in a different direction but i still didn't have the answers to the questions of the the first question that came up was why was there body patterns body styles attached to how we think like that didn't, it was true, but I didn't know why. And the other thing that came from testing and quizzing everybody inside of my gym was that 80% of my income came from three of these thinking types, which eventually became endotypes. And I was like, if I knew why these three composed 80% of my income, I could sell that to other gyms, sell that to other life coaches. Why do they like me? And the other people kind of think I'm amusing, but don't continue to come <laughs> back for more and more. Right. Um, and so I continued on that journey of trying to figure out what it all meant, where it all came from. And Elizabeth Gilbert, who's an author, has a book called Big Magic. And she talks about how sometimes the muse she calls it the muse comes and picks you and says, I choose you. I'm ready to come into the world. I think the endotype formula was just an idea that was ready to come into the world and picked somebody who was super curious, who wasn't afraid to fail and um, to try and figure some stuff out and just wanted to play with this whole quiz thing. And, and that's kind of how, it, it and it took three four years for it to fully develop into what it is today um the next right researcher the next right bit of information the next ted talk and i'd be like "Ooh, i know where that goes in the endotype formula Ooh, let's let's figure out if that goes in too and so it just became a big fun puzzle for me to solve yeah that's awesome i actually it's so funny too like how the universe just like connects people uh mm -hmm. 
I'm like, hmm, interesting. Um, Cause I am in the process of launching a nonprofit, which is called the foundation for brave and mighty girls. And there um, I'm looking for assessments for like junior high and high school age kids, not because there's a lot of like early childhood development, you know, testing for Mm -hmm. like learning disabilities or autism spectrum um, or just in general, like emotional development, that kind of stuff. Right. So there's a ton of stuff in like early childhood, but there's not really anything that helps um, begin the process of identifying who you are, or at least things that you are, like you said, naturally inclined towards before the world beats it out of you. (laughs) Um, And you're like, oh, I'm good at math. Oh, but I don't have to be an accountant. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. (laughs) Um, So anywho, um, yeah, that was actually one of the things I was like, how do you just like, because that's what I think I'm going to have to do is create an assessment um, at some point to, to help uh, work through that process. And like, you know, so when one of the girls comes into the program, she can like take this test and it's like, what are the things that you're most interested in? And how do we like connect you to those opportunities? Cause it's basically a way to, um, give junior high and high school age girls, the ability, the opportunity, the space to connect with successful female entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals, um, all across the gamut, like here's the, here's all the things like, you don't have to do what the, the cookie cutter system says that you have to do. Mm -hmm. There are all these women who have done, you know, um, succeeded in male dominated industries or started their own bakery or whatever, like, doesn't matter. So, um, I was like, an assessment would be really cool. Just kind of like help the process because adults don't know who they are. So, um, I mean, why not? Why not start? That's the whole point of the foundation is to start earlier. Like, uh, so ideally like myself, you know, I didn't have to go through 20 years of pain and divorces and learning things the hard way and all this kind of stuff. I mean, still learn stuff the hard way. Right. But man, how much cooler would it have been to start ahead of the game (laughs) instead of like figuring it out as I go later, uh, where there's actual, like, fiscal consequences <laughs> or, you know, yeah. uh, anyway, so, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's just fascinating to me. I'm like, Oh, you like created an entire assessment yourself. I mean, it obviously took work, <laughs> but, um, anyway, no, I think that's pretty cool. Um, how did you, so like, how, how is there like a certain number of like people you have to talk to? Like, how does that even, um, you know, you know sudoku puzzles uh-huh. those little math puzzle boxes yeah right i call this my human sudoku okay <laughs> so so i have this ability to spot patterns like it's mm-hmm. just a natural ability that i have to Same. spot patterns and then also so my endotype is called the interpreter so i'm always looking for what's useful here like let's take in some information and then what of this is actually useful um so we we when the whole when endotype formula started it was to fix other quizzes right it's like well this quiz is kind of good or this assessment is kind of good but i think it overlaps over this and it could bring in additional nuance so we kind of started with some information and then it's changed into something completely different like we still use Jungian cognitive functions as part of the endotype formula um, which is what like myers-briggs is based on Mm -hmm. we're looking at them entirely differently we're going back to young's research instead of making this another photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy that Myers-Briggs has kind of become Mm -hmm. and understanding that we are not thinking beings we are thinking feeling energy physical beings we can't just assess one portion of it when you take our quiz it's going to ask you a lot of questions about how you think because if I understand how you think I also know all this other stuff about you too Um, And so it was a matter of starting to spot trends of, and, and quite honestly, I mean, I know it sounds a little woo, right? But it was trusting that inspiration and that muse 
and an idea would come to me and I'd be like, oh, I think this is a thing. I'd just be watching some random sales seminar um, and, and I'd be like, oh, I think I know how that works inside of my endotype. Okay. And, you know, and I'd start scrabble, scribbling notes and then it's like, let me see if it folds out for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And some of the ideas were a hard no, like, nope, that works for me. And that's true. Uh, this thing that I'm thinking is true for me, but it doesn't work inside of this system. Um, so it was, it was proofing and it was talking to a lot of people. Yes. And, and like, it, it, like, you know, when you know, uh, yeah. so, so when I was the level at which I was asking questions of people, right. It's not just like, um, Hey, might this be true for you? But these are really deep and vulnerable things. And you can see it on people's faces when you get the, and they're like, yeah, that's my secret. I don't tell anybody about <laughs> like, how do you know that I have these thoughts? Um, you know, at this point, if I know somebody's endotype formula, I can tell them basically what the, what the imposter syndrome voice inside their head sounds like. And mm -hmm. it's because of the endotype that I am that I can figure these things out easier than I think other people can. Um, but, but when I start describe like, so your voice would probably sound like, and they're like, whoa, that's weird. Get out of my head. <laughs> I don't know how you know that. And it's like, well, but I can see it on the charts that I have. Like I can see it on the combination of how we think, what our inner motivators are, and what our endocrine glands are. And these all connect together to present this picture of who we are. Um, so for me, because it lives in my bones, that's what my coach always says, like, Laura, you got to slow down. This lives in your bones. I don't understand what you're saying yet. It's easy for me to get. Mm -hmm. And the how was a lot of curiosity, a lot of Googling and research and watching a whole bunch of things and reading a lot of books, standing on the backs of many, many other experts and just asking people a lot of questions and seeing whether or not it was true and where the patterns were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of because initially I'm just like, well, um, as we start having events and, you know, putting together workshops and all that kind of stuff for the girls. I'm like, I feel like that's, that's where I would start is just asking different questions and look for the trends and the patterns and like, okay, so these types of things mean this type of thing and then putting it yeah. all together so that we can kind of create something. And, um, yeah, cause again, there, there isn't anything. And I'm like, why isn't there anything? Like, we no, just and, like, you know, what? and there may be, we can, we can absolutely stay in touch and talk about this, but there may be a way for you to be able to utilize, you know, the endotype formula to get you a head start. Um, cause mm -hmm. like I said, I have a seven, I have a 17 year old boy, right. And you're, you're targeting a different demographic slightly, but uh, so, so I'm, I'm parenting a 17 year old and my, my 12 year old they're very different endotypes. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the things that they crave, the things that they think they're not as good at, the things that they want more than I can even provide them. So I have one son who's very focused on belonging, who, who craves belonging and who would do almost anything to feel like he belonged. <laughs> and it's just this great internal craving of his that's true for his endotype. Um, and so, so for me as a parent, I have to parent him differently, right? Knowing that I can parent him differently. I can satiate some of that craving. I can show him how that looks and how that works and how that might work uh, like into his future and not only as a blessing, but also in that, that same reaction yeah. you just had. Of, <laughs> yeah. Ew. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> ew. yeah, man. Yeah. Ooh, as a right. teenager, that's a, that's a scary place, man. <laughs> right. And, and then I have an, my other son whose big internal craving is to be seen as smart and capable and knowing, and just to throw in some extra fun. He's also on the autistic spectrum. Mm. So knowing that and 
with having worked through IEPs. He currently doesn't have an IEP anymore. He's mostly mainstream, doesn't need that much support, but he still needs some support. But I have to navigate that support a little bit more carefully because the worst thing I could do for that young man is make him feel like he's dumb, mm -hmm. make him feel incapable or like he can't or not honoring his own intelligence and his own knowing because that's such a huge craving for him. Now, knowing these two things about these two boys, it allows me to parent in a completely different way. And I think it's, and I can empower them with the knowledge of this is going to be a thing for you all the way through your life. And thoughts aren't facts. So you might have a thought and a feeling like you don't belong, but let's look for the evidence. Mm -hmm. Thoughts aren't always facts. And so those couple of things, if given to a teenager at that right age, can just be, I mean, I see it and, and, and no lie, you like, right, I'm, I'm biased, I think my system is great, but I see <laughs> it in how it's helping and changing these young men to grow into more easily. They're still gonna have to go through the bumps and bruises. Yeah. They're still gonna have to go through the phases but more easily and more equipped than what I feel I was sent through my teenage years and into young adulthood with. Yeah. That's what the thought that, or the word that popped out of my head was better equipped yeah. to deal with the stuff. Cause um, a lot of those things, like the, the thoughts aren't facts and like uh, my God, the amount of anxiety, um, social anxiety in some cases, but anxiety in general, like that I've been through and it's taken me, I mean, well into my thirties, um, to finally start like unraveling some of that stuff and being like, Oh, like not everyone's like talking shit about you, you know, like <laughs> you also don't have yes. to be perfect all the time for everyone. And like being able to let go of that was like, and it's still there. Like, don't get me wrong. Like it's still there. Oh, sure. it's, it's still an ingrained piece of me, but it does not cause me as much heartache as it had for the first 35 years of my life yeah. like are you kidding me <laughs> yeah and it's there, uh, it's, rough. it's there for a specific purpose it's there as part of our design and it serves a good job for us too but without knowing right it's mm -hmm. like without knowing what this tool inside of our brain is trying to tell us or trying to help us with it just sounds nasty or it just mm -hmm. sounds mean or it's you know it's this self-talk that just doesn't work for us um and so yeah equipping it's that permission to be fully who we are knowing fully who we are like mm -hmm. yeah you know really understanding all the different parts of us yeah it's it's nuts so <laughs> we're definitely yeah on the same <laughs> same vein here um yeah. It's just, God, it's so much work. Um, I learned so much on TikTok too. Like it's such a great place. <laughs> I've learned so many different things, like mental health stuff. And I'm like, oh, um, a friend of mine was just like, I think I have ADHD. <laughs> sure. <laughs> She's like, I thought, and I've actually talked to a few different people, like a couple of um, friends, like in the business community have been diagnosed with ADHD in their like thirties, forties, fifties. And this whole time they were just like, I'm defective. There's something wrong with me because you know, you don't fit the box. And especially depending on when you went through the school system, like, uh, like I feel like my age, millennial age down, uh, or not down, but like kids in the eighties and nineties, um, got diagnosed a shit ton with ADD and ADHD. Cause it was like, Oh my God, this is a thing. We should give everyone Ritalin. Um, right. <laughs> yay. Kids will be calm in school. And it's like, I mean, no, cause they're kids, but anyway, um, you know, people on either side of that are still kind of like, what is wrong with my brain? Like, why can't I just do things? Um, and yeah, TikTok, Dr. Yep. TikTok. That's anyway. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's great because it's all, it's all evolving. And sometimes you just like pick something up, like that whole, like thoughts aren't facts thing. When I heard that, I was like, huh. Okay. That was a little like puzzle yeah. piece that kind of went into place. Um, the other big one too, was actually when I realized that no one is an adult and no one has any idea what they're doing. No, <laughs> we're all like, just, we are all I, just yeah. suffering in silence. Yep. Uh, but yeah. I was in my thirties and then I was like, Oh shit, dude. Like nobody, nobody has it figured. What? 
Um, that was a game changer too, <laughs> but yep. uh, yeah. Cause we don't talk about it because adults have to pretend to be adults to their kids. And instead of like talking through some of the stuff, anyway, I feel like we could talk for like 17 hours straight, probably. Um, Let's write a book. It'll be great. Oh my God. Yeah. It'd be such a good time. <laughs> we should have our own podcast. Like, oh God. Uh, so um let's see what's a good segue um so we can talk about strengths and weaknesses um how do you feel like it helps you communicate better to understand like your endotype um thingy formula yes um so understanding so the endotype formula tells me shows me right that we all have this protective side of us we all have this possibility side of us and on our protective side we have these cravings, might be the craving to be seen, the craving to belong, we've talked about craving to, to, to have power, to be empowered, to be significant, to have our voice and to have our voice honored. Now, either those things are cravings that we have or they're things that we put out into the world easily and freely on our possibility side. So it's kind of like a Lego. Think about, we have, right? We have receivers that we mm -hmm. crave into, and we have the Audis that we put out into the world. Understanding uh, most communication challenges are because I think you think like me. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I want, but it's, but it's subtle. I don't even realize that what I want is to feel seen. Right. Not very many walk up to you and they're like, I am very motivated by the need to feel seen. So if you could like, you know, if you could listen, just know that yeah. about me just, and just like edify that. Acknowledge into me, how amazing right, if you I could am. Edify yeah. that into me. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know that about ourselves and we can't express it to others. So we think that's what we're asking for. But really, it sounds like. If you if you knew me at all, you'd know the sponge goes on the left side of the sink and not the right side of the sink. Yeah. Toilet right? paper over the top, over the top of the roll for the love of God. Right. <laughs> over the top. Yeah. Right. But it has yep. nothing to do with the sponge or the toilet paper. Yeah. So so that's interpersonal communications inside a family relationship or dynamic. But when it comes to our clients, here's the thing. We believe also our clients think like we think. So if I just say how I naturally feel and and a lot of the marketing that's out there, or like how to do marketing, how to do messaging that's out there right now is about storytelling. Tell your story because what you know, the same things that you've gone through are the same things your clients are looking for, blah, blah, blah. And it's it's re-entrenching. It's entrenching this idea that we all think the same. Now, I do agree that some of the things that I've been through, the patterns that I've overcome, if I am a coach or if I'm a consultant, are likely some of the same problems my ideal clients are going to have. But what they think about those problems, how those problems are affecting them, why they want to change their motivators are different than mine so understanding my own endotype helps me to know oh this is how i work so i can really ask for what i want i can really advocate i know how to pick support for what i need and want and how to explain to people right it's like oh, oh you're asking a question which is not inside of my zone of genius so can you give you know it's like um, I, I know the thing you're trying to ask me, but can you give me three options of what this might look like? Because I think you have a better handle on this than I do. And then I'll be able to kind of eye doctor my way through. Yeah, not that, but definitely this, right? <laughs> so knowing how I work helps me to be able to advocate and ask for what I want. But it also helps me to start understanding how my clients, my coworkers, my children, my spouse, partner, how they think different so that there can be a coming together instead of a, well, I, I'm saying what I mean. I don't understand what you mean kind of happening. Mm -hmm. I think even like the, it made me think of like the love languages and how that I think yeah. started to kind of take yeah. off the conversation of that kind of stuff where it's like, I mean, there's, there's only five, 
Um, I think that there's a lot of like finer details inside of that. Like, it's not just as simple as acts of service. It's like, what does right. acts of service mean to you? And what does it mean to me? And those kinds of things. But I find uh, like uh, that comes up a lot in conversations too, where people are like, oh, well, you know, my, my primary love language is uh, physical touch or words of affirmation or whatever. Um, so it like allows, it like opens the gateway for those types of conversations and in, in some way where it's like, oh, this is what's important to me. Um, another thing that popped up, I had to, like, one of the things I realized fairly recently is that I really like public recognition. <laughs> um, and Good for I, you. Good for you. <laughs> thank you. Um, that was like a big, cause I'm an yeah. introvert yeah. and I used to be, um, terrified of public speaking. Like when I was at Best Buy, having to talk in front of the whole store, you know, 125 people was just, I was sweaty. I would blush. It was just, it was awful. And now I'm fine for the most part. Like I still sweat because, you know, sure. um, nerves, that's like right. your body being like, you right. are panicking, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> in case you didn't know, you are very nervous, um, yeah. but it doesn't come out the same way now. So anyway, um, yeah, it's like the whole, um, so I always thought I'm like, oh, I don't call on me. Like, don't, don't be like, oh, Kristen's, you know, she's done something amazing. We should all look at her now. <laughs> We should, oh, we should sure. stare at her and like sure. applaud her. Uh, but it took me, I was like, I do like, I like public recognition. Like I might blush sometimes when it happens, but I like to, you know, similar to your younger kid, the, um, being smart, knowledgeable. I like being the one that people ask questions to. And so the yes. public recognition is just kind of a natural, <laughs> I was like, so yes. it still makes me want to throw up a little bit, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know you haven't taken the quiz yet. I'm sitting here, right? Because this is what this is also what I do is I just talk brain to is doing. and I yeah. like type them the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So I think you're you're what I would call like a builder type, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so the full title is anxious balanced builder. The anxious, that's your red flag, like, ooh, <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Balanced is you the the endocrine your endocrine system stays pretty balanced so a lot of the builder types they can kind of feel into their body they know when they need to go for a walk it's like i know i i need a steak right now or oh no not a steak i think i might need some broccoli right now they can kind of feel into it in a way that a lot of other people can't um and and are more in touch with their body they tend to have it's not to say effortlessly their body stays balanced, but they tend to have a more balanced weight, a more balanced um, body composition, if you will. And then builder is your unique title um, because that's just kind of how your brain works. You're looking at it as an engineer. Um, and if that is true, then one of the things about the builder is they, they're, one of their main cravings is to, to feel and to be recognized as significant and important. It's like, what I say matters. This is important. And it's more than just like a surface level, but right. it's like, I, I do important things. You guys have <laughs> cravings to do and be involved in important mm -hmm. things. Uh, and there can be with that craving kind of a never enough um, sure. piece that goes with it because it's just this big internal driving motivation um, that's really, it's it set you up to do the work that you're doing now, you know, mm -hmm. because you've recognized, you've noticed your whole life, if, if you are that type, right? You've noticed ways that you've, you've been made to feel insignificant, which then puts you on alert to see out in your work and in, in companies that you work for, ways that other people are being marginalized or made to feel insignificant or not being utilized to their full potential. And you're like on high alert for it so that you can go do amazing things with it. This is some funny shit right now. Like, it's right? Just like, this is, this is like, what I say when you're like, well, how do you know? Live, <laughs> live, well, live for us, uh, right. recorded for you. Um, it's so funny. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm like, man, you just like touched on like all the things like childhood to adulthood. Like, oh mm, yeah, I can tell you, I mean, we feelings could, of insignificance, we, my we God. <laughs> and and in with the insignificance, you have the unique, so I'm, I'm when I look, y'all who are listening to the podcast can't tell I'm looking, but I'm definitely <laughs> looking away 
from <laughs> Kristen right now to my charts, you have the unique ability to empower other people. Like that's your hero <laughs> place, like you empower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can also see and call people into who they are and be in alignment. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that is not who you are. Like uh -huh. that's your two great strengths. Um, and oh, and so that voice, it's interesting. You have a podcast, isn't it? Isn't because, it though? <laughs> isn't it though? Because that, that imposter syndrome thing inside your own mind is always going, does, does this even make sense? Does this matter? <laughs> is what I'm saying even mattering? Does this messaging What am I even doing with really? my life? Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Who You're would always listen examining to me? that. Yeah. Right. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. it's uh, yeah. Fascinating. The, the whole reason why my business is called Catalyst is because I am a catalyst for people. Um, yes. Always have been. Uh, yes. Sometimes it's something small, um, but it's like those little things where like I'll bump into somebody that I that used to work for me and they're like, dude, the, the when you told me yeah. this thing, it literally changed my life. Like, this is what just, I love about builders. Is, yeah, because it's not like, you know, we're just talking like, you know, kids that used to work at Best Buy who were there, you know, like fresh out of high school, like they don't even know. And like, um one of the conversations was like, you don't have, like, why would you do this thing? Like, this is who you are. Like, this is the stuff that you bring to the table. And that person I actually had to convince to quit instead of having to fire him because he was, it wasn't a good, I was like, look, dude, you have so much to offer the world. It is not in this building. Um, and if you keep trying to stay here, I'm going to have to fire you. Uh, because like you are killing me. <laughs> Like you are such a pain in the ass, but he was just, he, you know what I mean? I'm like, that's just, it just happens sometimes. But, um, yeah. So catalyst, uh, came for a reason. Yeah. Um, and I am obsessed with not leaving this earth until I've made a difference. Like I, my one you got hashtag real talk guys. Um, <clears throat> my greatest fear is oblivion, like leaving and not leaving a mark mm. and like having no one even notice that I was gone, which I know isn't the case. And also don't know is the case because that's the struggle, right? right? It's this like, craving. it's the, I'm like, Oh yeah. Lots of people would show up to my funeral. Maybe someone would show up and throw themselves on my casket. I, you know, like maybe there would be uh, weeping and wailing and then people telling funny stories about how amazing it is like my fantasy. Right. Um, right. but then the and other part see, for me is like, no one would show up. Yeah. <laughs> knowing that about yourself, you can start requesting that now mm -hmm. you can, you, it's okay to request testimonials. It's okay to go on your podcast and be like, Hey, what have I said on this podcast that you really liked? Hey, can you, you know, like hashtag catalyst consulting, like, yeah. like, mm -hmm. let me know because those are the so things that um, fill us up i know it feels awkward mm -hmm. to do right but those are the things that fill us up yeah it's seriously it's so funny it's like i just oh laura um <laughs> <laughs> when i first started my podcast i was like hey like i asked like i don't know if i ten of my closest friends to like go do a review um and marketing myself or selling myself i guess um, it remains one of the most difficult things is asking for that stuff. And so it's actually on, like, I'm working on this, uh, with my coach and just kind of in general is the, is like working through that things, like asking for, um, testimonials from podcast guests and just being like, Hey, like, what did you like about it? Um, why would you want your people to listen to it? Like little things like that, asking for reviews. So I'm like revamping once I'm done with this, like stretch of, uh, interviews, um, revamping my stuff and like re-recording my intro, recording an outro, being like, Hey, like subscribe, do a review, all the things. Cause I always have forgot, like, I don't ask for this stuff, but you're totally right. It's like, man, I really wish that people would do that. Like it would make me so happy. So anyone who's listening, please do a review. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. cause it just, it, there's that whole, some of that too, I think is cultural where it like feels gross and you're not supposed to like ask for stuff like that. Cause you're like selling yourself. I'm like, no, will you please subscribe? <laughs> right. I right. would love it so much. It would make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. And notice uh, how, when you, because that part of you that's connected to significance is also connected to an archetype or a, an internal, there's, there's a type of psychology called internal family systems. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's the young child. It's your young oh, child. My inner child. Totally, yeah, yeah. Your inner yeah. child is totally yeah. connected to significance. Yeah. And is like, 
can you guys like me? Like, please, will you like right. me? Will you think I'm fun and pretty and cool? And um, <laughs> yeah, I that's actually, I was talking to a relationship coach, uh, Kim Costi. She's also a polka dot. Um, and we were just kind of offhand. So we just like started talking about this stuff and like my inner child and um, she's like, what's the message? Like, what's the story that you keep putting yourself into? And we worked into, I'm not important enough. And I was like, what? Oh my God. Like I knew I like I had issues. Like I got daddy issues, like whatever, you know? Uh, but it's so funny. <laughs> you just, I'm, I'm like, please like me. That's like when my, yeah. I'm like, I just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for those of you who can't oh. see, like her <laughs> shoulders come up, her hands come mm-hmm. in front of her face, like a little kid. There's mm-hmm. that kid energy that comes, comes with it. Um, wow. and, and the same is true <laughs> for me around identity. I'm, I'm mm. so identity. I have significance in my parent position. So my, that's my judgy voice inside my head. So we <laughs> share the significance piece. Uh-huh. just in a different part. But for me, it's about identity. Like, are they going to like me? They're going to think I'm weird. I'm a total weirdo. Mm-hmm. And I've just had to make peace with my total weirdoness. And knowing that some will, some won't, so what, move on, you know, like, not yeah. everybody's going to love exactly who I am. But the identity piece of me that connected to my young child to my, like my inner essence, my soul is what helps me build the endotype formula. Mm-hmm. So it's there and it was this inner craving that was unsatiated for so long so that I can go do this work that I'm here to do. And the Mm -hmm. same is true of you and everybody else. Yeah. Shit's wild. I'm just so crazy. Uh, But there's elements of that too. Like I think anybody in like the coaching space um, has generally, cause again, there, I mean, it's an oversaturated market and anybody can say they're a coach, whatever, but a lot of people who are naturally called to coaching or teaching that kind of stuff, um, they have those kind of similar th- where they can see like you did, or like I do, like you can see the things, whatever the specific thing is that you're really good with. Um, cause like I can do a 30 minute strategy session with somebody and pick out the things that they have issues with and give them an action plan. And they're like, Whoa. um, what? Yeah, no, that's great. And it's not always mind blowing, but like sometimes it is, especially when you kind of jive with somebody a little bit more, but uh, it's that like, whatever your pattern is that you see um, and like connecting all the pieces together for someone, it seems like anybody that's in that space, yeah, leadership coaching um, that has that, like, it's just how you see the world. Yep. And like connect the dots for other people. Yep. Yep. Who we are we bring into everything we do and if we are aligned in who we are our work is fun our work is amazing like the that's when we start having these serendipity things i teach a mm-hmm. whole class on manifesting right which is a little oh, bit of yeah. a woo concept i know it's not though but, like, it's, right but it's, it's, real. That, but yeah. it's real yep <laughs> because, and i teach it from a very different perspective a lot of manifesting is just like be happy be positive be yeah. think happy thoughts choose gratitude right exactly <laughs> but yeah. the the formulas show me exactly what we use or are not using well to be able to manifest. And once we align that, amazing things start to happen for people. Mm -hmm. And it just gets really, really crazy over the course of the 10 weeks. And then it's a skill that they learn over 10 weeks that they carry on in their life with and carry on, you know, in their businesses with being able to manifest all these amazing opportunities because it's all about alignment. Yeah. And, and aligning these internal parts of ourselves. Yeah. Cause there's the work that goes behind it. Like you, you can say the affirmations and you can do the manifestation, but you have to do some work. Um, yes. and I think it that looks different for effort. people. Like you can't just be like, good things happen to me. Um, you have to like then show up for yourself or for yeah. the universe, whatever it is that you need to work on. Um, it reminds me of, I have a friend that's, she's also a dot. She teaches, um, living a happy, healthy life mostly focused on people in sobriety or like recovery mm-hmm. because they're like, I got sober, but like now what? Right now it <laughs> still like, sucks. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not drunk or high or whatever. Like, cool. I get to just like feel this shit this is awful. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, there, it's, I think it's aligned with that too. Like people will just be like, Oh, I tried affirmations and it didn't work. There's still other stuff behind that. And I feel like that's probably what you're kind of um, focusing yeah, on too is like some, the stuff underneath. Yeah. 
for some people, um, uh, so, so for myself, part of my manifestation formula is my intuition. And so mm -hmm. for me, things like vision boards work real well. Always yeah. have, always have. For another one of the people in my, right, in my, my course, um, it, vision board wasn't going to help her at all. For her, the thing that she needed to step into and open up in order for her to have manifestation is like love and heart connection with people. And she was like, mm, bull crap. I don't want to do that. Like, nope, not it. Sounds terrible. And I was like, yeah, but that's the thing that it is. And so, so she had to learn and she had to develop a whole love practice for herself, for other people. And that's what we helped her to be able to do. And when she did that, things started to line up, things started to happen, you know? So it's different things for different people. It's not just let's make a vision board and say our affirmations and yeah. write our goals and it's going to happen. It, it, we have to figure out that's why i love teaching the manifestation experiment is because it's it's not only different for each endotype but then we find an individual process that that person's actually going to stick to mm -hmm. right because if yeah. if you're if you're not actually going to do it then then stop. what's the point right yeah, stop, stop stop going to your vision board uh girls nights or do it but yeah. just still have fun like because it's right. still like crafting um, but yeah, I know a lot of people where like vision board stuff doesn't work for them. And I mean, I feel like to some degree, some of it is all voodoo. So if you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. Like, sure. uh, <laughs> you know, so what's the point? Um, yeah, no, I like that. I like the, the difference in all of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I feel like we seriously talk about this. Uh, We're a little off the rails, but it's yeah, been a great I'm combo. Great. I, I love like it. This yeah. is great stuff. Yeah. I th I know that some of my diehard friend fans are like, I love that stuff. Like, you know, cause it's, I I'm talking about myself too. And like, I'll share things about me and, you know, the realizations and revelations that I've had about things too. So it, um, it's a little bit more personally engaging, I guess, but at least I know that people who know me like it. <laughs> so, okay. um, but so as an entrepreneur and business owner, um, what advice would you give people when it comes to running their businesses? Figure, figure out yourself, right? Obviously mm -hmm. figure out yourself and what you do and then stop doing the things that you don't do well. Yeah. Outsource, right? That's good. Um, I, I am not a precise and detail oriented person. I built so many websites for myself right oh, because we God, think yeah. in the beginning we have to diy everything yeah and and sometimes you know you're bootstrapping for cash and you do have to do the first diys but find a system you know i i use a system similar to like profit first where mm -hmm. i take a certain amount of my money for me i take a certain amount and give it away I take a certain amount put it in savings and i take a certain amount and run my business on the rest of it and with that I can afford to have an assistant and I can afford to have other people build my websites for me and take care of payroll for me and do a lot of these detail oriented things that just aren't my zone of genius because then I get to spend my time in my zone of genius generating additional income to pay them to take care of all the things that they that I don't do well mm -hmm. right those websites, I can build a website again, and I could probably do a decent job of it, but it's going to take me so much longer doing an activity that isn't really going to produce me income. It's not my zone of genius, what I should be doing. So that's, that's my big advice. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. Um, I feel like for anybody, especially people that are bootstrapping, which is like, uh, I think 80% of entrepreneurs just start a business without any kind of funds or financing for the most part. Um, at least that's the most recent statistic I saw. So if you're bootstrapping it, you're like the most of the rest of us. Um, and it's a fun and terrifying challenge, <laughs> but <laughs> I would never go back. Um, but yeah, it like focusing on that kind of a concept of make the money at the beginning so that you can outsource faster, like make that be your goal. If it's some version of profit first or whatever, but the sooner you can get help on that stuff, the, the quicker you will scale, the faster you will um, get to where you want to go, because you'll have all these ex experts on your team that are like helping you do the stuff that they're really good at. And, yeah. um, 
even when you need to learn and ask questions, like you have a person, you have a bookkeeper, you have a website, an SEO person. And um, like you said, God, I don't even know how many websites I've done either. <laughs> like it's so, I hate it so much. Right, right. None of and, this you know, is surprising. Some people are going to be like, oh, I love it. Yeah. You know, like it's super fun for me. Um, you know, I, that I have a friend who she, she works endotype wise. She works very opposite. She is all about the details. She is all about it. Everything looking just so everything doing just so for her, it's the, like getting herself out there. That's oh, the yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. So she hired, you know, salespeople, marketing people to come in and do some ads and figure out how to get her and her messaging that she's very precise and detail oriented in out there. So more people can see it, hear it, get to know her, come into, you know, and so it might not, you might be the best self-built website builder and you need help someplace else, but understanding where that is for you will then dictate what kind of help you need inside mm -hmm. of your business you know like so that yeah. that's that first step i think yeah um and on that note what resources do you wish you had had or known about at the beginning of well i mean any of your serial entrepreneur journey <laughs> <laughs> anything that you would have been like man that would have been really cool to know <laughs> You know, I think for me probably is to build a support network or team. Um, we've, we, you and I have talked about Polkadot Powerhouse a couple of times during this. I think they're a really great for female entrepreneurs. I think that they're a really nice little clubhouse that we all get to belong to because um, I've been able to pull some support for, for different things, right? Do I need a shoulder to cry on today? I know I can, I can. I can Marco Polo, my friend, Nikki, do I, do I need some, do I need just a great idea? I can contact my friend Elaine or my friend Teresa and, and they're just going to give me a great idea around some stuff. Um, but having that support team, because very often as an on in my entrepreneur journey, I felt like I had to figure it all out myself or like somehow, even when I had staff, like I had to hold back information like i had to hold all the big problems they they weren't my problem people but that just gets real heavy to carry as an entrepreneur so i mm -hmm. think having some kind of a support network whether it's a, a really supportive networking group or creating really you know having some some mentors that you know you can call on some collaborators you know you can call on um, to be able to help you in these different aspects, whether it is problem solving or just going, yeah, that sucks today. I'm sorry. You know, mm -hmm. like whatever it is to not feel like you have to do it on your all by that. You like, I might be doing it on my own, but I don't have to do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You need, um, people that will help you burn everything to the ground when you, they're like, no, that is not happening. Cause I can tell you my two best friends are a balance for each other. Um, and sometimes they flip flop depending on what the situation is. They're like, excuse me, like whose house and when, um, or, <laughs> or they're like, hell yeah, you can do this. Like you're amazing. Like those days where, you know, the imposter syndrome just like seeps in and you're like, what am I doing like who who would ever listen to my nonsense like i just made all this stuff up i don't know what i'm talking oh yeah about. that totally when yeah. you are in your zone of genius and you are doing the work that you've been called to do it totally feels like you're making it all <laughs> up mm -hmm. you know when yeah. people, like how'd you do the endotype formula i made this crap up in the corner of my living room and people yeah. but it seems to work yeah it's <laughs> i know <laughs> it seems to work yeah. pretty good so sometimes I need to be like, Hey, can you tell me something good about myself? Cause I feel just like an idiot today. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. It's just as simple as that. And they're like, girl, you are amazing. Like it's this whole, yeah. Um, yes. you're a beautiful, magnificent creature and the world is better because you're in it. Like that kind of stuff is just like, thanks. Okay. Or I can do this. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, so tell us how we can support you, how we can find you, stalk you on the internet, um, et cetera. <laughs> take the endotype formula. <laughs> yes. So if, if you want to take the quiz, it is free on my website. 
So if you go to endotype, E-N-D-O-T-Y-P-E.com, um, it's the first big button that you see when you log in, take the quiz. Uh, you take it all the way through, put in your email address at the end and your full profile is sent off to you. And then you'll find out other things that I'm doing. Um, I'm running my manifestation experiment again in the month of October. So teaching people how to bring and attract um, what is in alignment with them right now. Level up, you know, it's time to expand when you're feeling that, oh, it's coming. The manifestation experiment can help you with that. Um, and how can you support me? So if you know of any of those either beginner coaches, those coaches who are like, yeah, I got my certification or I kind of know what I want to talk about. And I've had a couple of clients, but <laughs> they're not charging what they're worth yet. They're right. Exactly. There's all kinds of voices. I run a coaching mastermind. Um, that is relatively affordable for those new coaches to come in and we just get them moving forward, get them doing their work and get them paid. Um, the other coaches that I work with are those that have been doing like, oh, I've been coaching for, you know, five years, 10 years, whatever it is, but they know in their heart and they can feel in their soul that there's a pivot that's happening or coming. And in that pivot, what ends up happening a lot of times is their ideal client type starts changing and they start grounding in even more to their endotype into the work that they're here to do. Um, so I do some one on one programs with those people to be able to help them really get clear on their work, get really branded according to who they are and start attracting those ideal clients. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and based on the live therapy coaching <laughs> that you guys have witnessed here today, <laughs> or in a couple months when this episode go live, goes live, either way, <laughs> right. yeah. um, I think it's, uh, it's worth your time. I love this stuff. It just yeah. me a little high. I was like, oh man, like Laura, she sees me like, cause that's the thing, right. Is like, you yes. saw me and you're like, oh, this is, I see you buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. Magnificent and and, little weirdo. Yeah. Builders are some of my favorite people, right? Because you guys, your guys' brain starts with like, why is this important? Who does it help? And mine mm -hmm. starts with, let me talk about ideas. Here's all <laughs> kinds of ideas. And uh, so the builders. And I'm like, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> right. And the like, and builders <laughs> reel me in. They're like, yeah. that. Talk about that right there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what was Stop that? Stop with the nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. That's, that's actually what I do basically for my clients yep. is like, hey, what? No, no. Like we're not doing, yes. we're not doing this over here. We're going to stop it. <laughs> yep. Reel them uh, in, dial them yep. in and get them yep. focused on the thing, right? Because what I get excited about is not necessarily the entry or what I'm thinking about today is not the mm -hmm. entry point that my clients can come in with me on. Mm -hmm. So as a builder, you're able to go talk about this, then people will want to learn more about this. Yeah. And, and can help build that path to, mm -hmm. to introducing people to what you're doing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. I always say I work best with dreamers, like the people that are like, I want to do like a million things and they're yeah. doing 26,000 <laughs> things half ass. Cause like, I'm like, my God, <laughs> uh, Stop talking yeah. about me. Yeah. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> Oh, you don't like it? Weird. <laughs> how does it feel? What's the uh, my, 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 how the turns have tables? I think it's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the office quote. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right. Okay. We'll stop jibber jabbering. Like people return to this has gone much longer than normal. So uh, they're going to be like, my God, Kristen, shut up. So see, there's a little imposter syndrome. Um, just boop, bubbled right up. So <laughs> thank you for joining me. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. And I feel like we'll be doing some things together in the future. Um, <laughs> just throwing that little manifestation out there. I love um, it. I love it. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Thanks for hopping on with me. Yeah, I really appreciate you having, having me on. It was a fun and amazing interview. Let me empower, let me... <laughs> Let me edit my little. You with, yeah, thank you. This was fantastic, and you are <laughs> excellent you. at your job. Thanks. Public recognition nailed it. <laughs> <laughs>